Hey, welcome back. This is the final exam review for Math 1610, uh, Calculus 1. And we will, I, I mainly want to focus in on limits, um, derivatives, and integrals. Okay, so that's what you're going to be seeing uh, mainly. Okay, so if you don't see it in this exam review, it's not going to be on the test. Basically, um, there will be questions similar to the question pools that I'm giving you right here. Okay, so 2.3, we're thinking of problems like 5 to 35 odd, and then 41 to 75 odd. So you can either go to the book, or you can go to, my, uh, to WebAssign and find similar problems. So let's go in the WebAssign for this first section and just kind of take a look at look see at these guys. So uh, you can tell which uh, problem you're dealing with uh, right here. Okay, so it says. Uh, and this test will be in, the final exam will be in WebAssign, so it's a good idea to kind of try to do these problems. Anyways, 7.2 uh, 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 so it's early transcendental 7th edition, section 2.3, problem number 5. That's what that is, okay? And uh, that's in our possible set of problems, so we can kind of go ahead and look at that guy and get some practice, okay? And that's what you do. Um, okay, so uh, th in, the, in the beginning, the uh, limit problems, I mean, we had the epsilon delta stuff. I'm not gonna put that on the test, but um, uh, th these beginning limit problems are pretty easy after everything was said and done, right? So all you were doing is basically a substitution. Um, and that also implied, if you could do that, that the function uh, was continuous. So something like y equals 8x plus 1 is continuous because you could do a substitution on the limit, okay, uh, plus 1, and, and evaluate the limit. And the limit will equal f of negative 2. So here is negative 16 plus 1, which is negative 15, okay? All right. Um, so 5 to 35, is anything difficult here? You don't know. If there is, you then you stop and you do it. So maybe like this one looks hard to you or something. So I'll try number 15. Um, limit as x goes to 1 of x all over x squared plus 8. And the final exam will probably have about 30 questions on it. Uh, anyways, uh, again, this guy is continuous. It's actually continuous everywhere. Rational functions are continuous everywhere, except for that denominator is equal to zero. And this guy, its denominator will never equal zero. So anyways, you could do a substitution to get your answer. So it's just going to be 1 all over 1 squared plus 8, which is 1 ninth, of course. Um, so no big deal there. Uh, let's see what else. Some trig limits, you know. Um, so let's try, what is that problem, number 25, uh, limit as x goes to 8 of the cosine of pi x over 3. Uh, these cosine functions are continuous everywhere, so you can do a substitution. Um, this will just be 8 pi over 3. Um, you can use your calculator to figure that out. So uh, TI calculator, TI 84 plus or below calculators are fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pi over three. That's the second quadrant, so it's negative, um, uh, negative one half. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see what else. You know, it, maybe that one looks hard. So try number eleven, or it's number thirty-four. Um, as x goes to zero, e to negative eight x sine pi x. Uh, again, these guys are, it's a product of continuous functions. You could just do a substitution. Be e to the negative 8 times 0 is e to the 0, times sine of pi times 0, which is sine of 0. e to the 0 is 1, sine of what becomes uh, 0, sine of 0 is just 0, so that would be equal to 0. Okay, so these are pretty easy. Um, the, the harder ones were... Uh, Kind of like these guys, where maybe you had a removable discontinuity to deal with. Uh, so let's look at that guy, number 47. Um, we have the limit as x goes to 0 of x all over x squared minus 8x. 
And if you do a substitution, you get one of those indeterminate forms, right? So if you plug in zero on the top, you get zero. Plug in zero on the bottom, you'll get zero minus zero, which is zero. So you can't do a substitution here. You have to first use some algebra. So if you uh, factor an x out of the denominator, um, when as x goes to zero, the x's will cancel, and you get one over x minus eight. And then uh, plugging in zero, now you can actually figure it out, right? So it's just one over zero minus eight, which is minus eight, so negative one eighths. Okay. Um, so that was one type of indeterminate. Another type is when you have to rationalize, so, so to speak, the uh, numerator. Um, it's like problem 54. So we have maybe the limit as x goes to 56 of the square root of x plus 8 minus 8 over x minus 56. And again, if you try to do a substitution here, there's issues, right? If you put it in the top, you'll get 56 plus 8 is 64, which square root of 64 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. You plug it in the bottom, you also get 0. Okay, so you have to do some algebra to make this work. And the algebra that makes it work is to multiply top and bottom by sort of the conjugate, right? So let's see how that worked. Instead of uh, minus 8, you're going to go plus 8. And if you do it to the top, you have to do it to the bottom. Okay. So in the numerator, um, I have to kind of foil that out, right? So this times this, the square roots will go away, and you just have x plus 8. And then the inner and outer are uh, um, opposites, so they'll add to 0. And then the last, negative 8 times 8, will be minus um, 64. And then downstairs, I'm not going to foil that out. I'm just going to leave it as it sits, because there's going to be a nice little cancellation. Okay, so here I have um, the limit as x goes to 56 of x minus uh, 56 again, all over x minus 56, and there you see the nice cancellation, right? And then square root of x plus 8, plus 8, um, boom, boom, those are goodbyes. Limit as x goes to 56 of 1 all over the square root of x plus 8, plus 8. And finally, you can do a substitution, and it will be uh, determined. All right? So you can put in 56. You'll get 1 over 56 plus 8 is 64 plus 8. Square root of 64 is 8. And finally, you get 1 over 16. Okay. Okay. So those kind of problems. And, and then we had uh, transcendental forms as well. So... Uh, problems like 41 to 75, we need to remind ourselves that the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x is 1, and then the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine x all over x is 0. Okay, so those become important in figuring these things out. So let's take a look at 67-ish. Um, that's the limit as x goes to 0 of sine to the 8th x over x. We could rewrite that as a limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x times sine to the 7th x. Okay. And then uh, if you can evaluate the, the, each, um, the limit of each term and each factor in the product, then, then you could uh, take the product of the limits. In other words, we could rewrite this as the limit of sine of x over x times the limit of sine to the seventh of x, uh, sine x to the seventh, so long as those limits exist. Okay? If, the, if they didn't exist, you'd have to try something else. Right? But we know these work. So the first one is 1. The second one, you could do a substitution. Sine of 0 is 0 and you just end up with zero, okay? Um, you know, we, we could try uh, number 71, limit as x goes to zero of 16 minus 16 cosine x all over eight. Um, what can we do here? So we want to get it into this, this uh, 
well, do we even need to do that? This is just a simple one. This is just a substitution. It kind of looks like the one minus cosine x over x, but there's no x in the denominator, and you could do a substitution, right? So you could plug in zero for x. You'll get 16 minus 16 times one all over eight, which is just gonna be zero. So that's kind of a tricky question. Uh, getting carried away with these problems. I feel like we should go on to the next section. Let me do one more. I apologize, I'm, this is overkill, I think. Limit as t goes to zero of sine of 8t over 7t. So the deal with this one, um, limit as t goes to zero, you could you need sine of 8t over 8t. Okay, sine of 8t all over 8t, and you could uh, get that by kind of multiplying in a clever way. You could factor out the one seventh for one thing, and then you can multiply by 8 over 8, um, which is kind of what's going on here. Okay. Uh, at the end, then you could factor out the 8 seventh, and then you just have the limit of sine of 8t all over 8t. Uh, and then this, this limit part is just 1, okay. and you just end up with 8 sevenths. So you see, if going in reverse, you can kind of see it a little better. 8 over 1, uh, the 8 will cancel with this 8, and you're just left with the 7t in the denominator. So you have to be kind of clever with... Uh, multiplying and canceling things out to get it get it to to uh, work. Okay, so that we good. Okay, so make sure you can do limits um, of that type. 2.5. Then I'm looking at problems like 37 to 51 odd, and these are the infinite limit types. Okay. So um, let's carry on with that material. So um, 2.5-ish, here's 2.5, and expand all, so 37-ish, this is 9, this is 9. yeah, okay, so here we go. Um, one-sided limits. Fifty-one, sorry, just one second. Okay, here's here's a nice one I like. Um, I have no idea what that number means on there. 2.5, 508. I'm just going to go with the book on these ones. So 37 to 51. But looking at, at this, uh, oh, I'm in the wrong section. 37. Um, okay, so let's look at uh, 37. Uh, so limit as x goes to 2 from the right of 1 x, sorry, all over x minus 2. Okay, so these types you'll have are, are, are something like L over 0. So whenever you have L over 0 types, they'll either be plus or minus infinity. It's going to be one or the other. Okay, um, to figure out which one it is, you do a test value. Okay, so I'm coming in the 2 from uh, the positive side. So I'm thinking numbers like 2.1. Okay, and then you plug that into the, the this expression here and figure out if it's positive or negative. So it'll be 2.1 all over 2.1 minus 2 is positive. So it'll end up being positive infinity. Okay. So that problem to the right there in WebAssign, whatever number that means, it'll limit as x goes to negative 8 from the right of 1 over x plus 8. Um, how did that work then? So again, this is L over zero, so you know it's either positive or negative infinity. Here's negative eight. I want to come in from the right, the positives, and uh, so I'll have something like negative 7.9. If you plug that in, you'll get one over negative 7.9 plus eight is positive. So positive over positive is positive infinity. Okay. Let's look at that number uh, 20 in WebAssign here. The limit as x goes to 8 from the left of negative 8 all over x minus 8 squared. Um, 
again, that's L over zero. And uh, we're coming in to eight from the negative side this time. So uh, test value would be something like 7.9. The numerator is negative. The denominator will always be positive because it's squared. Sorry. So your answer is going to be negative over positive, which is negative. Um, so you end up with negative infinity. Okay. Um, all right, so let's look at some other ones here. Uh, 41 from the book. We have the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of 1 plus 1 over x. Okay, and we had all these other forms, so L plus infinity is infinity, L minus infinity is minus infinity. Okay, so in this case, um, we have L plus something, and we have to figure out what that something is. So in particular, the limit as one over, of 1 over x as x goes to 0 from the left. So this time, here's 0. I'm coming in from the negative side. So I'm taking uh, test values like negative 0 0.1. That'll be positive over negative. So this will be negative infinity. So it's L minus infinity, and of course that will be minus infinity. Okay. Right. Um, let's see if there's any other ones in the homework that really are nice in that in that uh, span of problems. I'm not getting any nice ones here. Four plus four. I mean. That one's an L over infinity, too. Let's try that one. So this is number 53 and 2.5. Well, that's out of my range. I only want to go up to 51. Let's look at 50 there. Sounds perfect. Looks pretty weird. 50. Um, limit as x goes to 0 from the right of e to the negative 0.8x sine x. Um, in this case, then, uh, you have... Uh, well, this, this isn't even the, the type, right? This is just plugging in. So you'll have e to the 0, which is 1, times sine of 0, which is 0. That will just be 0. So that wasn't even an infinite thing. Um, how about this guy? It's number, uh, uh, number 43. It's more along our, in our wheelhouse. Negative 9 from the left of x squared plus 8 all over x plus 9. <laughs> so this guy here, um, I'm coming in t from the, uh, so negative 9, I'm coming in from the negative side. In particular, I'm worried about this part, right? Because this is going to be L plus something. Um, and that something is going to determine what, ha what happens. So um, coming into negative 9 from that direction, I'm thinking of things like negative 9.1. And if I plug that into the thing I just circled right there, I'll get a positive over a negative, which is negative. So it's going to be L plus negative infinity, which will be negative infinity. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and look at one of those weird trig ones. Okay, so limit, this is number 46. The limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the right. Uh, negative 8 over cosine x. So in this case, uh, you can maybe do a picture is better than the table. Like before, I was doing the little tables for the test values. Uh, note that this is L over 0, so it's either going to be plus or minus uh, infinity. Anyways, uh, cosine looks like this. I'm coming in from the positive side to pi over 2. And pi over 2 is right here. So the cosine values, these these kind of output values will all be negative, right, coming in there. So you'll have a negative over cosine of something that is uh, coming in from the left, which will produce a negative, so that will end up being positive infinity, plus infinity. Okay. Or you could just do a test value in your calculator, uh, something a little above pi over 2, but not too far above pi over 2. So remember, pi over 2 is like 1.5 something. So you want to pick in radians like 2, okay? cosine of 2. Um, anyways, I think that, that's pretty good for 2.5. Um, 3.2, 
uh, we introduce the derivative. In 3.1, we, we do the kind of the technical definition uh, uh, with regards to limits. But in 3.2, we dive into the limit, the derivative, basic de derivative formulas. And in 3.2, I'll be considering problems like 7 to 57 odd. Okay, so let me look in the book. Um, so I, I personally, I think the best place is just go to the book and, and read in there. But it's nice to have it. You should be getting plenty of uh, experience with WebAssign if you're doing your homework. Anyways, uh, 7 to 57. So finding derivatives. Um, let's look at uh, number 17 where we have f of t is negative 3t squared plus 2t minus 4. So these are just power rules. So we negative um, 3 times 2t plus 2 times uh, 1, and then 0. So negative 6t plus 2. Okay, so you should know how to do that. You should know how to do kind of the trickier ones. Um, like, for example, I don't know, 29y equals 6 all over 5x cubed. You could rewrite this as 6 all over 125x cubed. And then you could rewrite that as 6 over 125x cubed. Okay. So its derivative would be 6 over 125 times 3x squared, which, of course, will just be, whoops, this is negative. Uh, so negative 3x to the negative uh, 4. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, so that would be negative 18 all over 125 times x to the negative 4. Uh, and then, you know, write it negative 18 all over 125x to the fourth. Okay, get rid of those negative exponents when, when practical. Uh, trig um, derivatives, you should know all your trig derivatives. Uh, you should be able to do the exponential ones, so like 25 you have uh, y equals 1 half e to the x minus 3 sine x. So y prime, uh, derivative e to the x is just e to the x, minus derivative sine is just cosine. Um, should be able to do things that kind of look like quotient rules but aren't. Okay, so things like f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 all over x squared. Don't do the quotient rule if you don't have to. Okay, You just uh, rewrite this as uh, x, you know, x cubed over x, minus 3 plus 4x to the negative 2, and then do the derivative. Okay. So it would be 1 minus 8x to the negative 3, if you wish. So 1 minus 8 all over x cubed. Uh, right, so uh, derivatives, 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 good stuff. Make sure if you get like a square root, you convert it to an uh, exponent, like 51. Maybe I'm beating this to death now. f of x is a square root of x um, minus 6 cube root of x. Okay. So rewrite it, right? So it's x to the 1 half minus 6x to the 1 third. And then uh, take the derivative using power rule. So this would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus 6 times 1 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds. And then you could simplify 1 all over 2 root x if you want, or just x to the 1 half minus uh, 2 all over x to the 2 thirds. Okay. Okay. So problems like that are fair game. That's 3.2. 3.3 then gets into the uh, uh, product rule and the quotient rule. So 3.3, we're looking at problems like 5 to 35 odd, and then 43 to 59 odd. And uh, let's see, 3.3, where are you? So product rule and... Uh, quotient rule. So product rule is like 1d2 plus 2d1. Uh, quotient rule is low d high minus high d low. 
And along with that comes then the um, derivatives of all of the trig functions. So you should know all six derivatives now at this point. Uh, let's take a look. So let's try number 13. No, let's do a, a product rule first. So number 9 f of x equals e to the x times cosine x. Okay, so f prime. Leave one of them alone, so leave e to the x alone, and then take the derivative of the other, plus uh, uh, take the derivative of the one you did not take the derivative of. And unfortunately, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so it doesn't look like I did anything, but I did. Um, simplify that a bit. Negative e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. Okay. Uh, also need to know quotient rule. So let's look at a quotient rule. And uh, let's look at 35. So we have uh, f of x equals 3x minus 1 all over the square root of x. So uh, you could just uh, split this up. Let's let's do the quotient rule when in Rome. So low, which is x to the one half, d high, which is three minus high, three x minus one, d low, which would be one half x to the negative one half, all over the low squared. Square root of x squared is just x. Okay. Um, I'm going to clean up the top by multiplying through by two x to the uh, one half, okay. x to the one half. So um, this times this will give me six x to the one half plus one half is just six x minus three x minus one. This times this part of it will be just uh, one, right? which is why I, I did it that way. Um, and then downstairs I have 2x to the 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. And then you can simplify the top, 6x minus 3x plus 1 over 2x to the 3 halves. So it'll be 3x plus 1 all over 2x to the 3 halves. Okay. Uh, let's go into WebAssign and see if they have anything unusual that we can look at for quotient rules and product rules. This is section 3.3. Three. Yeah, there's a product rule. There's a quotient rule. Let's do that one for the quotient rule. Uh, so f of x equals x all over x minus 8. So f prime of x, you do have to do a quotient rule on this one, low times the derivative of the high minus high times the derivative of the low. Whoops, the derivative of the low is 1. Sorry, I carried away there. All over the low squared. Okay, and then that'll be x minus 8 minus x all over x minus 8 squared. That'll just be negative 8 over x minus 8 squared. Okay, so you just randomly kind of go through and find problems to work on. That one looks annoying. Um, that's like the one we just did. Just we'll do, do, do one more product rule and then we'll go on to the next section. So this looks like it's number 43. And it has some trig stuff in there. So t to the eighth sine of t. So f prime of t, leave the t to the eighth alone, take the derivative of sine. And then the derivative of t to the eighth is 8t to the seventh, and leave sine alone. Okay. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, okay, so let's make sure you know all the derivatives of the weird ones. So, you know, uh, here's number 48. y equals e to the x minus cotan x. So you should know the derivative of cotan. y prime is e to the x uh, minus negative uh, cosecant squared x. And then that'll just be e to the x plus cosecant squared x. Okay, great. So, uh, you know, quotient rule, product rule. Then uh, the last section I want to look at in, in chapter 3 is the chain rule. And 3.6, we're looking at 17 to 41. Odd. Okay, so 
Let's look at number, I guess, 15, start there. Y equals 3 times 4 minus 9x to the 5, 6. Okay, so Y prime, um, you kind of take the derivative of the outer part and then tack on the derivative of the guts, right? So it'll be, bring down the power, uh, 3 times 5, 6 times 4 minus 9x to the 5, 6 minus 6, 6, which is negative 1, 6, and then times the derivative of the guts, which would be negative 9. So I would get, I have to do a bit of simplification here. This will be 2, 3, negative 9 times 5 is negative 45, all over 2 times 4 minus 9x to the 1, 6. Okay. Um, let's look at another. So... Oh, I, I like these, um, like 27. We have y equals x all over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so this is a quotient rule and chain rule. So um, you may want to rewrite it as x over x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So you'll have low d high, x squared plus 1 to the 1 half times the derivative of the high, minus high times the derivative of the low, 1 half x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half times 2x all over the low squared. x squared plus 1 to the 1 half squared is just x squared plus 1 to the first power. Um, I want to get rid of, uh, so it, look, if you rewrite it like x squared plus 1 to the 1 half um, then minus the, the, the 2 will cancel the 1 half. You'll have x squared all over x squared plus 1 to the 1 half all over x squared plus 1. You see, you kind of see here what you need to do. You need to get rid of this, this fraction in the numerator here, this thing. So that's what you multiply by. That's how I know what to multiply top and bottom by. Okay. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. And uh, so I distribute in, in the top. So this times this, the exponents will add to give you 1. So you just get x squared plus 1 to the 1, which is x squared plus 1. This times this, the denominator will cancel, and you just get x squared. And then this times this, you add the exponents. So it'll be x squared plus 1 to the 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 halves. And then these guys will cancel, and you get 1 all over x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves. So definitely, 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 you'll see something like that. Um, trig versions of this uh, dilemma. Um, let's look at 37. Yes, uh, y equals sine of pi x um, squared. Okay, so the squared is inside the sine. And uh, how do we do this? So one way I, I taught you to do it is kind of work in, in terms of inner to outer. So the innermost part is pi x. And then you could say v is u squared. And then you could say y is sine of v. And then to get the derivative, you just take the derivative of each one of these parts and then multiply them together. So y prime will be cosine of v times 2u times pi. And then it's just a matter of back subbing. Okay, so cosine of u squared times 2u times pi. And then uh, u is pi x. So this will be cosine of pi x squared times 2 times pi x times pi. And then uh, finally you'll get 2 pi squared x times cosine of pi x uh, squared, okay? Okay, um, so uh, let's do one more chain rule with the uh, trigs. And then there's also natural logs in here too, okay? I just, just want to make sure that's right. Um, 
it, yeah, it looks, looks okay. Um, sure, let, let's just move on to the logarithm ones then. Uh, there's exponential ones in there, of course, like 57. Uh, y equals e to the uh, 5x. So y prime gives you right back e to the 5x, but then times the derivative of the guts, which is 5. So that's 5 e to the 5x. Um, there's also logarithms in here. Um, sometimes it's easier to expand the logarithms and then take the derivative. Select like number 79. You have the uh, y equals ln of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay. So what I would do is rewrite it as ln of x plus ln of x squared minus 1 to the 1 half, and then rewrite that as ln of x plus 1 half ln of x squared minus 1, and then take the derivative. That would be a little easier. Okay, so y prime, uh, ln of x, derivative is 1 over x plus 1 half. Uh, ln of x squared minus 1, so it's 1 all over the x squared minus 1 part, and then times the derivative of x squared minus 1, which is 2x. So y prime should be 1 over x, um, 1 half, and the 2 will cancel, plus x over x squared minus 1. Okay, um, so that will do uh, 3.4. And then 3.5, we have implicit differentiation. So that's where you're always tacking on the y prime part. So I'm looking at problems like 5 to 25 odd. Um, where are you? 5 to 25 odd. So like number, um, let's look at 15. That one looks kind of hard. xe to the y minus 10x plus 3y is 0. Okay. So um, you kind of just work as usual, and then if you take the derivative of, of a y variable, you have to tack on a y prime. Okay, okay so this first part requires a, a product rule. So leave x alone, and then the derivative of e to the y is e to the y. But then you have to tack on a y prime. Plus, uh, now take the derivative of x, which is 1, and leave e to the y alone. Then minus the derivative of 10x is just 10, negative 10. Uh, and then plus the derivative of 3y is 3, derivative of y is 1, but then you always have to tack on y prime. Okay. Then I want to get all the y prime stuff together. So x e to the y, y prime plus 3, y prime equals 10 minus e to the y. Okay. And then factor out the y prime. So you get x e to the y plus 3 equals 10 minus e to the y. And then finally solve. Y prime is 10 minus e to the y all over x e to the y plus 3. Okay. So problems like that. Uh, 3.5. 3.6 gives us derivatives of inverse functions. And we're looking at problems like 17 to 41 odd. Um, and we have some more formulas that, that we kind of need to know. So in particular, I expect you to know the derivative with respect to x of sine uh, inverse, uh, the derivative with respect to u, so you can use the chain rule of u, is going to be 1 all over the square root of 1 minus u squared times the derivative of u with respect to x. And then the derivative with respect to u of tan inverse, or arctan, if you would rather, of u is 1 all over 1 plus u squared times the derivative of u with respect to x. So you have to have those memorized. Of course, there's no formulas uh, given on the test. Um, so let's take a look at some of these. Okay, so what did I say? 17 to 41. Um, let's look at uh, 23. It looks like we're going to end up with a, a quotient rule on this one. So I have arc sine of 3x all over x. Okay. So g prime of x is going to be low times the derivative of the high, which would be 1 all over the square root of 1 minus 9x squared times the derivative of 3x, which is 3, 
minus, so that's low d high minus high d low, arc sine of 3x times 1, all over the low squared. And for this problem, I think they'll just let you uh, kind of write it with a complex fraction. So 3x all over 1 minus 9x squared minus arc sine of 3x <coughs> all over x squared. If you're worried, you can multiply by 1 minus uh, 9x squared. Square root of 1 minus 9x squared on top and bottom. You'll get 3x minus the square root of 1 minus 9x squared times arc sine of 3x all over x squared times the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. Okay. But I think you're allowed in web assigned to just leave it like this. Okay, um, that's 3.6, 4.5. So I'm going to fast forward all the way through. Uh, chapter um, 4 was uh, it was applications of derivatives, so some high-powered theorems in there, Rolle's theorem, mean value theorem, um, uh, graphing equations, finding maxes and mins. So you, to, find the ma to maximize a function, you take its derivative, uh, set it equal to zero, find the critical numbers, and the critical numbers turn out usually to be where the maximums or minimums are located. Uh, in 4.5, we had infinite limits, so I, I want to focus in on that section. So I'm really interested in limits, derivatives, and integrals. Okay? 17 to 41 odd, and we have limits to infinitaire. So um, these are pretty simple. It's like you're just circling the high degree terms and kind of figuring it out from there. But uh, one, one factoid, some facts to remember, of course, the limit of x to pretty much any power that's positive all over, or wait a second, sorry, the limit of some constant all over x to any positive power um, as x goes to infinity is always going to be zero. Okay, so we kind of use that fact to uh, develop rules of these limits. Um, limit as x goes to infinity of e to the negative x. You guys remember that? That negative x is going to make it be like 1 over e to the x. And if you're putting in like 10, 100, 1,000, it would be 1 over e to the 10, 1 over e to the 100, 1 over e to the 1,000. It's going to go to zero. Okay. So likewise, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the positive x, then if you're plugging in numbers like negative 10, negative, it'll have the same kind of end behavior. Anyways, let's take a look at some of these. Uh, so for example, 21, you have the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 2x squared plus x all over 6x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. Okay. So uh, when you have these kinds of forms, you can just pick off the high degree terms in the numerator and denominator and look at that resulting limit. Okay. So this will be limit as x goes to negative infinity of 2x squared all over 6x cubed. And then that will be the limit as x goes to negative infinity of I guess just one all over uh, 3x. Seem right for some reason. And then uh, that's L over zero form, which will just be zero. Okay. So basically, if you have L over zero, which is basically this form, um, or sorry, L over infinity, Jesus, that, that'll be zero. Okay, L over zero is either positive or negative infinity. So this guy was L over negative infinity. It's zero. L over plus or minus infinity is always going to be zero. Okay. Uh, let's look at uh, one of these funny ones, like 27. Okay. Um, so we have the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 2x plus 1 all over the square root of x squared minus x. Okay, so we can plot, uh, we can pick off the, the high degree parts, but um, got to be a little careful this time. Infinity, we have 2x over the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is not x, right? It's 
become absolute value x. If absolute value x is negative x, if x is less than zero, positive x, if x is greater than or equal to zero, right? Okay, so uh, in our direction, going to negative infinity, we're thinking x less than zero. So I can replace square root of x squared with negative x, and then this will just be the limit of negative two, which of course is just negative two. Okay, so those are always weird. Um, Sure, let's try one like 19. Uh, limit as x goes to infinity of 7x plus 6 all over 9x minus 4. Okay, so that would be um, just picking off the high degree parts. It's the limit as x goes to infinity of 7x over 9x which of course is the limit as x goes to infinity of 7 ninths, which of course is just 7 ninths. Okay. Um, and then of course there's ones where the, the numerator's degree exceeds the denominator's degree, uh, like 15 part um, C. We'll just do this last one and move on. Um, limit as x goes to infinity of... 5 minus 2x to the 3 halves all over 3x minus 4. Okay, so the high degree terms are right here and right here. And then we can rewrite our limit. So x goes to infinity. Negative 2x to the 3 halves all over 3x. Let's limit as x goes to infinity negative two-thirds, x to the three-halves minus two-halves is x to the one-half. And uh, then that thing is going to negative infinity. So you could, if you need to, you could always do like a table. It's going to be either positive or negative infinity um, if the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator. But if you're putting in numbers like uh, 10 squared, and then 100 squared, and then 1,000 squared. Uh, the result is going to be um, negative 2 thirds times 10 squared to the 1 half is just 10. And then negative 2 thirds times 100. So it, it looks like it's getting really big negative. So it's going to negative infinity. Okay. Okay, so enough of that. Uh, then the last is just chapter five stuff. It's just integral, 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 integral. Um, starting with 5.1, which gave you basic uh, uh, rules for finding uh, indefinite integrals. So we're looking at problems like 11 to 35 odd. And uh, so basic problems where you need to rewrite them. So um, like number 13, integral of one over x square root of x dx. You could rewrite that as 1 all over x to the 1 times x to the 1 half is x to the 3 halves. And then you could rewrite that and use the product of the power rule. Okay. So you add 1 to the old exponent, negative 3 halves plus 2 halves is negative 1 half, and then multiply by its reciprocal, it's negative 2 plus c. And if you want, you rewrite it, negative 2 over square root x plus c. Um, so any variation on that theme you should be able to handle. Uh, let's look at 23. I like these kind of problems. x plus 6 all over the square root of x dx. Okay, so you could butterfly that thing, split it into two fractions x over square root of x plus 6 over square root x. x. Simplify each and then use power rule. x to the 1 half plus 6x to the negative 1 half. Dx. And then uh, that'll be x to the 1 half plus 2 halves is 3 halves times 2 thirds. 6x to the now 1 half times 2 plus c. And that way, two thirds x to the three halves plus twelve x to the one half plus c. Okay. 
so basically just antiderivatives. Can you figure out antiderivatives? Um, then we kind of connected this antiderivative to the, to the idea of area, and uh, that led us to the fundamental theorem of calculus, which basically said um, you can figure out the area underneath a graph by evaluating the antiderivatives at the endpoints of the interval in question. So that gives us that takes us to 5.4. So I'm going to skip all the hardcore theoretical stuff with the summations. If you're ever going to become a calc teacher, you definitely want to know how to do all that stuff. If you want to go to grad school and mathematics or something, you would definitely have to know how to do all that junk. But uh, we'll presume that most of you aren't going to go there. Um, so let's take a look at... Sorry, one sec. Okay, anyways... Uh, so 5.4, um, yeah, so now we're talking about area underneath curves. Uh, instead of uh, indefinite integrals, we have uh, definite integrals, and we're evaluating them. Okay? So, uh, for example, like number, um, let's look at number 19. It's like an interesting one. Let's see, well, at least uh, I'm going from negative 1 to 0, and I have t to the 1 third. Uh, minus t to the two-thirds dt, right? Okay, so I got to find the antiderivatives first. Uh, so this is going to be t to the th one-thirds plus three-thirds is four-thirds, and then times three-fourths in front. Uh, minus t to the two-thirds plus three-thirds is five-thirds times three-fifths, and then evaluate from negative one to zero. Okay, so when you do the evaluation, you first you have to plug in the top number first, and then you plug in the bottom number. Okay, so you start with the one I just circled in red. So that would be three-fourths times zero to the four-thirds, minus three-fifths times zero to the five-thirds, minus, and then I have three-fourths times negative one to the four-thirds, minus three-fifths times negative one to the five-thirds, and uh, the first part, those are just zeros, 0 minus 0. And then the second part, uh, negative 1 to the 4 thirds. What is that? Well, it's negative 1 to the 4th, and then the cube root of that. Negative 1 to the 4th is positive 1, and then the cube root of 1 is just 1. So this is 3 fourths times 1. Minus 3 fifths, negative 1 to the 5 thirds. So negative 1 to the 5 thirds is the same as negative 1 to the 5th to the 1 third. Negative 1 to the 5th is negative 1. And then the cube root of negative 1, believe it or not, is negative 1. Okay, so I have negative 3 fourths plus 3 fifths. And then multiply top and bottom here by 4, or sorry, by 5, finding common denominators here by 4. So I get negative uh, 15 twentieths plus 12 twentieths. Um, which is negative 27 20s. 10, uh, 15, 20, 27, 20, that sounds good. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, problems like that. 5.5, um, then I believe we get into the substitution problems, and I'm thinking of questions like 9 to 27 odd. And then 33 to 53 odd, and then 65 to 81 odd. Okay. So 5.5 is all about the substitution method. Um, these are pretty, usually pretty straightforward, but then they have some curveballs in there. Uh, anyways, let's look at, uh, I guess, number 19. So you have 7x all over. 1 minus x squared cubed dx. Okay. So I do uh, u sub for this stuff in the parentheses, the 1 minus x squared. And then du is negative 2x dx. And then dx is negative du over 2x. Okay, so I have the integral of 7x all over u cubed times negative du over 2x. Uh, that'll be 7 halves, the x's will cancel, and there's a negative there, don't forget that as well. Negative 7 halves integral, 
uh, du over u cubed, in other words, u to the negative 3 du. And then use power rule, back sub. Negative 7 halves u now to the negative 2 divided by negative 2. Let's see. Um, negative, negative, positive 7 fourths. Um, u squared plus c. And then we get 7 all over 4 times 1 minus x squared squared plus c. Um, okay, so substitution. Let's look at one of the... Uh, trig versions. Okay, so here's uh, 41 in the integral of sine of 2x cosine 2x dx. There are some trig formulas you can use to rewrite this. I'm, I'm just going to do a u sub though for um, sine of 2x and see what happens. So du would be cosine 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2 dx and solve for dx, which is du all over 2 cosine of 2x. So we end up with uh, the integral of u times cosine of 2x times du all over 2 cosine 2x. Okay, so the cosine of 2x is cancel. You can factor out the 1 half, and you get u du. And it's just power rule and back sum. So you get 1 half um, u squared over 2 plus c, and then that equals 1 fourth times sine of 2x squared plus c. Um, and we have to worry about uh, weird ones, like uh, 65, where the u sub doesn't quite work. Right? So if you let u equal the x plus 6, um, du will be just plain old dx. And then uh, there's an issue, right? So if you tried to do your sub, you couldn't get rid of the x. So what you do is use this formula to get rid of the x stuff. So we have x equals u minus 6. So this would be the integral of u minus 6 times u to the 1 half. And then you still have to um, distribute, right? So you have to go boom, boom. So that'll be uh, integral of u now to the 3 halves minus 6u to the 1 half du. And then it's just power rule. Okay, so you get um, u to the 5 halves times 2 fifths minus 6u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. And then plus c. And I get 2 fifths times u, which is x plus 6, to the 5 halves minus uh, 3 goes into 6 2 times, so 4 times x plus 6 to the 3 halves, and then plus 6. So there's always these weird ones where the u sub doesn't quite work out. So expect, you know, something like that can, can be on the test. And finally, then evaluating. Uh, use substitutions. I gave you two different methods in the video. I like just uh, dropping the limits of the integral and then at the very end doing a, a back sub. So let's look at something like 81. Um, I have the integral from 3 to 4 of 4x e to the x squared dx. Okay, so I have u. Um, I'm going to make that the exponent there, the x squared. Um, du is 2x dx. And then dx is du over 2x. Okay. So with this method, I just completely drop the limits on the integral and uh, wait until the end to put them back in. So I'll have 4x e to the u times dx, which is now du over 2x. Okay. I can factor out a, one, a 4 over 2, which is the same as 2. And then I have uh, the x is canceling, which is good. That's what I need. And then I have e to the u du. Okay, the integral of u to the u is just u to the u. Let's see. And then I can, uh, sorry, my ear is itching. Um, then I can back sub 2e to the x. Whoops, and this is the, the part where I screwed up. Uh, there's no plus c when you do a definite integral. I, I, I'm just forgetting that I have to evaluate. Okay, so it's uh, 2e to the x squared. And, and then I remind myself, okay, I have to put the 3 and the 4 back in. So you can't just put 3 and 4 in for u. That won't work. 
Okay, so this will end up being 2e to the uh, 16 minus 2e to the 9th, whatever, whatever that turns out to be. If you need a decimal or something, you can calculate and get a decimal. Okay. Okay, so that's substitution stuff. Um, then uh, we'll skip the uh, numerical analysis, just leave that for homework, and go into 5.7, which is uh, the logarithm stuff. So I'm thinking of problems like 5 to 41 odd. And uh, let's take a look. So I have, uh, let's try 13. That looks interesting. X squared minus 7 all over x 7x. Six. Okay, you could do long division here. Right? You just kind of split them up by uh, doing your butterfly. So I have x squared over 7x, which is just x over 7, minus 7 over 7x, which is just 1 over x dx. Okay, let's make sure x squared over 7x is x over 7. And then negative 7 over 7x is just negative 1 over x. So yeah, those are right. And then go ahead and integrate those. So I'll have uh, x squared over 7 times 2 is 14 minus 1 over x. What's the integral of 1 over x, good people? Okay, so ln absolute value x. Right? Okay, and then uh, plus some constant. All right, let's try number 19. Okay, so here I got to uh, do long division first. The denominator's degree is less than the numerator. So I'll go x minus 3 into the x cubed minus 3x squared. And I like to use placeholders, so plus 0x is plus 5. You, know, you don't have to, but it just helps line everything up when you go to do your subtractions. So I ask myself, what times x is x cubed? So x squared times x. So I get x cubed minus 3x squared, and then subtract. So both of those are 0, and then plus 0x, so, uh, and then plus 5. So there's really not, nothing left to do. <laughs> Gee, really hurts. That did not turn out to be very interesting. So this is actually equal to the integral of x squared uh, plus 5 all over x minus 3. Dx. If you're unsure, you can always find a common denominator and show that it's still equal to the same thing. So x squared all over uh, x minus 3, top and bottom, x minus 3, plus 5, all over x minus 3. And you see you get, yeah, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5, all over x minus 3. If you find a common denominator and then combine the numerators of the common denominator, you get back to where you started. So that worked. It's just that division was a bit unusual. Um, okay, once you're there, then you can integrate both parts. So this would be x cubed over 3 plus 5 ln absolute value x minus 3. Let's see. That wasn't very eventful. Let's look at another one. Um, uh, I don't know. Let's look at one maybe that works out a little nicer, right? Let's look at 17. No. Yeah, sure. Let's look at 17. Um, so this one is the integral of x squared minus 3x plus 2 all over x plus 1 dx. So x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by x plus 1. This will be more traditional, probably more like the one I'll put on the test. So x times x is x squared. x times 1 is plus x. So you have to know how to do long division for the test. Negative 3x minus x is negative 4x. Bring down the 2. So what times x is negative 4x is so negative 4. x minus 4. Then I have to subtract everything. So that would be 6. So my integral becomes x minus 4 plus 6 over x plus 1 dx. And then that will just be x squared over 2 minus 4x plus 6 ln absolute value x plus 1 plus c. 
Um, let's just do a simple one. I'm going to put a simple one on there. Uh, 3 all over 5 minus 2x dx. So my point on this one is you can't just write 3 ln absolute value of 5 minus 2x. That won't work. Okay, You could do that for simple ones like this or uh, this one. Okay, That's just 5 ln of x minus 3, but you can't do that here. Yeah, look, the u sub. Differential is negative 2 dx. dx is negative du over 2. So um, when I do my sub, I'll have 3 over u, and then there'll be this negative 1 half floating around. Okay? Um, that changes it. That's why it's not just 3 ln of absolute value 5 minus 2x. Right? It's negative 3 halves ln blah, blah, blah. So this would be du over u. Um, and then that'll be negative 3 halves ln absolute value of u plus c. And then back subbing negative 3 halves ln absolute value of 5 minus 2x plus c. Okay. okay, the last section I'm going to put in there is 5.8. I'm not going to put um, the hyperbolic functions in on this guy, on this test. Um, 3 to the 41 odd. 5.8 inverse trig formulas that you need to know. Um, the integral of du all over the square root of a squared minus u squared, excuse me, is uh, arc sine, or if you'd rather, sine inverse of u all over a plus c. And then the integral of du all over a squared plus u squared is 1 all over a arc tan of u all over a plus c. Okay. And so you have to have those memorized. And let's take a look. Okay, so um, I guess number seven. One all over the square root of one minus x plus one squared. Six. Okay, so this obviously has the sine inverse form. In this case, the a is just one. But the u is x plus 1. Okay, so the du, dx uh, will become du. So here I'll have the integral of 1 all over the square root of 1 minus u squared times just du. And then that'll be sine inverse of uh, u all over a. a is just 1. Let's see. And so that will be sine inverse of x plus 1. Let's see. Okay. Let's do a tan version. So number 13. And we have e to the 2x all over 4 plus e to the 4x. So this is a tan inverse, but it's just kind of disguised. Um, you can notice if you rewrite it, e to the 4x is just e to the 2x squared. Okay, so if you let your u be e to the 2x, you kind of have it. a will be 2, um, u equals e to the 2x, and then the uh, differential of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2 dx, and then dx will be du all over 2e to the 2x. Okay, so I get the integral of e to the 2x, all over 4 plus u squared times du all over 2e to the 2x. And those e to the 2x's are gone now. So yay, goodbye, goodbye. You can factor out one half. And then we have our nice inverse tangent formula, right? So it's just the 1 plus u squared, a squared plus u squared, where a is 2. So this will be 1 half times 1 all over a times tan inverse of u all over a. Let's see. So I'll be one-fourth tan inverse of u, which is e to the 2x, all over 2 plus c. Okay, okay so just uh, limits, derivatives, and integrals. That's pretty much all you're looking at for my final exam. Um, And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, uh, participating in my class. Uh...
and we'll see you next year, hopefully. Okay, have a good day.